Greetings, YouTube. Today I'm going to be reviewing whoop, Monkey. I didn't show up too well, I apologize. It's a very thin font. A Journey to the West, a the classic Chinese tale of pilgrimage and adventure retold by David um, uh, Kierdane. Yeah, Kier Kierdane. Um, now this is a, an abridged version of this story because the original 16th century novel had a hundred chapters. This does not have a hundred chapters. Um, and it is interesting for me because I have been a fan of the character, the Monkey King, for a long time. I've seen him in comics, I've seen him in film, uh, but I never got around to reading the actual literature that he was based upon. And now I finally have. I found this at a, for a dollar um, at a donation uh, stand. Um, this is being put out by um, Shambhala, Boston, and London. Um, and uh, it's uh, got some nice wood block prints and the woodblock prints are throughout the, the book and the prints are Japanese um, and they were from the middle of the uh, actually 18, 1837 so yeah close to the middle of the 19th century and I quite enjoy woodblock prints and I think it, it especially suits this story well um, and I had actually watched a video game playthrough, I think it was in 2014 by Lumen of Lumen, Tales of Lumen, which was based off of a, off of the monkey. It was a post-apocalyptic game set in the United States, but the main character was called Monkey, and they have a character named Pigsy, and there's a character named Pigsy in here. And I never real, pardon me, I never realized how closely that post-apocalyptic video game adhered to this storyline. It was quite fascinating once I read this. I'm like, wow, they just, <laughs> they just ripped off the entire novel, didn't they? Um, so we have the story of a monkey that actually is not born of, of, of flesh and blood. Monkey is actually born from the very fabric of nature itself, a stone that is breathed, life is breathed into it. And his tales of how he becomes an immortal and then an attempt to redeem himself because he's made a number of people angry um, helps to guide a pilgrim from China to India to get some sacred texts on Buddhism and then bring them home. Um, and in the process achieve enlightenment along the way. And Monkey often comes off as an absolute jerk, which isn't a surprise. I've, you know, like I said, I'm familiar with the character of Monkey. Um, but he really does come off as a jerk on more than one occasion here. Not just a playful jerk, sometimes a mean-spirited jerk. Uh, doing things that are more than just a little questionable. But what surprised me was the level of complexity and meaningless legalism used in the divine court of the Jade Emperor in China. And it wasn't just that the, the Jade Emperor himself was in charge but that all these incredibly powerful divine beings are portrayed as being his servants, including, and this one threw me for a loop, including Buddha serves the Jade Emperor. Now, I've read up on Buddhism, and the gods themselves bowed down to Buddha because they, for, they saw that he was a true, and truly enlightened being Something that they, many of themselves were not. So I had a hard time imagining that Buddha served the Jade Emperor. I'm not saying it's not Chinese history, but I'm, you know, the historical references are not, are not accurate. I'm just saying it. It. I found it a hard time buying that because I know something about Buddha, and also it just seemed that it made no sense. Well, additionally, they have Buddha in here being this somewhat vindictive individual. He actually punishes people in a way that I don't think Buddha would do. Buddha is always about helping people along the path to enlightenment. And when they punish themselves, he's always about showing you that it's the fact that it is yourself punishing you. Your slavery to your ego and your ties to the material world are what are enslaving you. But no, no, explicitly, Buddha punishes people in this story which I thought was completely out of character for Buddha. And in fact, there's a point in here where they beat a dragon until he converts to Buddhism. What the crap was that? I I just, I found that very uncomfortable. And com again, completely out of character 
for for Buddha and to the very nature of Buddhism. And while my readings of this topic are probably shallow in comparison to the people that wrote these stories in the 16th century, it's weird. I also found it interesting in how intricately they had woven Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, and Taoism. For me, because in my head, those three are very separate things. Yes, they are connected, and there and there are some cultural links and some philosophical threads that run through all three: you know, Buddhism and Taoism and Zen, uh, an offshoot of Buddhism. I realize there are other offshoots shoots of Buddhism itself, that Buddhism is a school of thought. I get that. But this, like, really links them. There is no, like, no separation in this book between, essentially, they're all intertwined in a way I thought was interesting, that I had not encountered that kind of intricate connections before, not in fiction and not in uh, historical references or, or philosophical discussions. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Now, I have no idea... How successful uh, Mr. Cardane has been in bringing the spirit of the 16th century novel into the modern age. I can tell you, though, as someone that is an absolutely in love with the redemption stories, I love redemption stories. Okay? Absolutely am fascinated with redemption stories. This didn't read like a redemption story to me. It just didn't. I don't get this. I didn't get the sense of a character that had redeemed themselves. Wreck It Ralph did a better job at redemption than this novel did. Hancock with Bill Will Smith did a better job about redemption than this did. I could give you dozens of other examples of novels and of stories, uh, films, and televisions, all of which did better jobs at portraying redemption and enlightenment than this novel. I don't know if it was the editor, the guy who was retelling the original story, or if it's the original story itself. But it just, I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm going to pass this on to my wife because she'll find it interesting. But I'm inter I really want to hear what she has to say when she's finished. I'm not going to let her watch this video um, and, and, and until she's because she's read it. Um, so, it's a good story in the sense that I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I have kind of a connection to the historical uh, background to the Monkey King. Um, but the Forbidden, was the Forbidden Kingdom with Jet Li in it? That was, I think, it was a wonderful portrayal of the Monkey King and of the spirit of redemption and of, and of enlightenment that, to my mind, was far more entertaining than this novel. Um, so, if you want some context and some background on Monkey, read this. But if you're looking for a redemption story, go someplace else. <laughs>